Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa kareem wa ala ali wa sabi ajma'in. Asharu la ilaha ila Allah wa atu la shurika Allah. Wa asharu Muhammadin abduhu wa rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did you think this was going to be in English? Okay, we'll do it in English. Well, as a new Muslim, Texas, a guy comes up to me, How come you don't say God like normal people? Well, why do you say Allah? Why don't you say God? Be normal, boy. <laughs> but watch the line of questioning that could come back. If a Muslim really wanted to get on your case, look what he could ask you. So you say God, you know? And you're a Christian. Yep, that's right. Well, do all the Christians say God? Well, actually, they don't. Huh? They don't. Where are all the Christians in the world? Well, most of us is over here off of Center Street and down over. No. No. Let's broaden your horizons a little bit. Let's look around the world. We got about six billion human beings walking and talking on the planet, doing this and that and the other, right? And out of those people, how many are Christian? About a fourth, roughly, give or take, about a fourth of those people are Christian. Do you know that? And do they all say God? No. 75%? No. Half? Mm -mm. Not even half. The reason I'm telling you that because the majority, the one single largest group of Christians is Catholic in the world today. And the largest majority of the Catholics in the world today don't speak English as their mother language. Did you know that? Yeah, they speak French, Italian, a lot of them are speaking Spanish. Some of them are speaking other languages in Europe. A lot of Catholics out there, and they're not using the word God. Go look at the translations. I'm telling you to do that. All you have to do is go to any hotel or motel on the planet. And when you go into the motel room, there's a drawer right beside the bed. Open it up. What's going to be in there? The yellow pages is already gone. Somebody got that. They didn't want the Bible. Then you take it out. It's put there by the Gideon Society. And you'll see that they're going to tell you about all the translations that they've made to these different various languages. The first one's the Afrikaans language, which is very similar to German language. You can look up the German language and see. You can look up all of the different languages. Keep reading. Keep reading. Look at all the different languages because the example they gave is out of John 3.16. What is John 3.16? Anybody knows? Raise your hand if you know. I'm not going to make you say it, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know John 3.16? Get it up there. All right. I saw more Muslims raise their hand than Christians. What happened here? What's that all about? John 3.16 in English, depending on which translation you have, says, For God so loved the world. We can stop right there and look and see. Now, when it said God... In English, what did it say in Italian? What did it say in French? What did it say in Spanish? German? In Belgium? Swedish? Norwegian? Danish? Go look! It doesn't say God. But what's really interesting is number two, right after Afrikaans language, the number two language is Arabia. So let's look and see what it says there. For Arab Christians and Arab Jews. Actually it says Ali Lam Lam Ha. Allah. It says Allah. For Christians and Jews. And you can look in there on page one, Genesis. In the translation that I have to Arabic, it has 17 verses on page 1 in Genesis. 17 verses. Coincidentally, the word Allah is exactly there 17 times on page 1. 
Well, let's take it to another level. How many Muslims are there in the world? Anybody know? About one fourth, about the same, give or take. Now, how many of those Muslims are Arabs? Huh? 90%? 50? 25? 12%. Maximum, 88% of all the Muslims in the world, not Arabs. So then, logically, that 88%, well, let's find out. Do they speak Arabic language? No. In fact, after you visit Maghreb, you know, Morocco, in Egypt, you'll find out that a lot of Arabs don't speak Arabic language. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. Anyhow, the fact is, the vast majority, almost 90% of all the Muslims on the earth, don't speak the Arabic language. True? Okay. So now, and you have Muslims from everywhere in the world here. We could take a poll, I can show you real quick. Anybody here from Egypt, raise your hand real quick. Egypt, hands up. Okay, Pakistan, hands up quickly. India, anybody from India? Here we go. Sri Lanka, anybody from Sri Lanka? Mashallah, right over here, Sri Lanka. Do I hear Indonesia? Anybody from Indonesia? Oh, we got, oh right over here, we got Indonesia. Do we have anybody from Texas? <laughs> all right, all right. How y'all doing? <laughs> y'all take your time of going down and y'all hurry back, man. <laughs> Anybody from Morocco? I can speak your language too. Couscous. <laughs> but out of all of us Muslims, every single Muslim on the planet uses the word Allah. Now, if you consider that, one-fourth of the world's population are using this word, Allah, to represent the one only God. Plus, the Christians and Jews who are Arabs are using that word. So, now if you want to talk about who's normal. Huh? This is just to level the playing ground. I'm not trying to prove a point, I'm just trying to bring some evidence for the point that I am going to try to prove. I'm going to attempt now for, to kind of shake your mind up a little bit and show you why Muslims use the word Allah. First of all, the Quran is only in the Arabic language. As I mentioned when we started the program up, Quran is not in any other language. And it doesn't translate. We can discuss meanings all day long in other languages and we do that. As Sheikh Suhaib said, very clear. At the same time though, if you want to know what did Allah say, you don't say He said something in the English language. In fact, the Bible itself was not revealed in the English language. There was no such thing as English even 1,000 years ago. Huh? There were no English speakers because there was no English until after the Normans invaded the Saxons in the year 1066 A.D. Uh -oh. But the Semitic languages, which are Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arabic, are sister languages and they go back to pre-recorded history. So again, setting the tone, which one has the more credibility? And what did they say in Aramaic? How many of you heard about a movie called Passion of the Christ? Again, all the Muslims went to see it. What's this? Hmm. Why do Muslims say Allah? Allah is the name that the author, if you will, of the Quran calls himself. Allah calls Himself Allah in the Qur'an. So it is really inappropriate for me to give Him any other name, isn't it? I mean, if He says, my name is so-and-so, then that's what you would call Him. What did Mel Gibson 
do with Passion of the Christ. He went all the way to Syria to get the only people left on earth that still speak the Aramaic language of Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, spoke what language? Aramaic. Yes or no? And those people who are left on earth that still speak his language happen to be in Syria, which is a Muslim country, and they have been protected for 1,400 years by the Muslims. Their lifestyle, these people are mostly farmers. Are you familiar with the Amish people, the Quakers, people like that? that these are real simple people. No weapons. If the Muslims wanted to get rid of anybody, they could go there and do it. But they have a big respect for them. They're very kind to them and they protect them. It's evidenced by the fact that they're still there. And the fact that Mel Gibson had to go there to get the language that he used in the movie Passion of Christ. And in the movie itself, in the Aramaic language, you can hear the one who pretended to be Jesus. By the way, he got hit by lightning three times while they were shooting that. And be like, isn't that a sign? I don't know. <laughs> Boom. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, it's true. He got hit by lightning three times. Anyhow, in the movie, you see the one playing the part of Jesus using that term, Allah. And then if you want to open up the New Testament, you can just look at it. It says, Eli. Okay, in English, Eli, but actually, these are trying to pronounce words from the Aramaic language. They're trying to pronounce words from a long time ago when they did the translation. And the word, like the word Allah, in some countries, they would say Allah. Like, for instance, Al-Bayt. I'm saying A-L-B-A-Y-T. Al-Bayt. But they'll say Al-Bayt. E-L. They do that in Morocco. They use E-L when they go to English, yes or no? Yeah, or French, you use an E-L, right? So, if you said E-L, L, and then the possessive ownership is E at the end of something. Bait-T. Bait is house. bait my house. Right? Is that right? So if I say Elahi, what am I saying? Huh? My God. Elahi, Elahi. Lima sabatani. My God, my God, why have you deserted me? And this is what we find twice in the New Testament. Think about it. Think about it. Now, Elohim. Elohim, that's Old Testament. This is Elohim. This is for God, it represents it. But they never met, pronounced the tetronomogram. They never pronounced it because it's forbidden to do that in Jewish law. You cannot do it. This is why they don't put any vowel markings on that particular word. In fact, they say they've lost the word which means God. They say that. But yet Elohim is what we say, only we pronounce it Elohimma. Oops. It's again the same, isn't it? The word Allah cannot be made plural, nor can it have gender. It is not plural and it's not gender. Right away somebody say, wait a minute, in the Quran it said we, us, our. Throughout the Quran Allah is saying we, us, and our. That looks like a plural to me. There's your trinity. No, it didn't. That's called the royal we. Just like when a king or queen make a, any kind of a declaration or proclamation, they say, we declare the following. It's the royal we in Arabic, just like we use the royal we in the English language. Kulhu Allahu Ahad. Say he is Allah, the unique, uniquely Ahad, one. The word in Arabic for one is Wahed. But the word Ahad is from that, and it means a one that no two is going to come after, you know? Well, you got one, and you're never going to match it. And Allah is uniquely one. So, for sure, this is the name that we use. And if you want to be a really good Christian, why don't you use the word that Jesus used? And if you don't believe me, believe Mel Gibson. 